I'm Ann Fritch uh, from Wauwatosa, Wisconsin. I was in the United States Army, stationed in Fairbanks, Alaska. And my book is uh, Survival Training in Alaska. Everyone who was stationed in Alaska was <coughs> told to go out for survival training. We were expected to be there for three days and two nights at 40 below zero with whatever we could carry. So I was assigned to the hospital in Fairbanks and we went out during the Christmas holidays because that is when hospitals have a very low census. So our group went out on the January or December 21st, winter solstice, and it was dark the entire time. There was no light at all. And so we, were, <coughs> we went to the Brooks Range, which is um, the mountains right on the, uh, it's north of Fairbanks and uh, just close to the Arctic Circle. And uh, there were 49 of us who went out in, in groups of seven. And our group was all seven women. So before we went out, we decided what we would take as far as uh, food. And it was all dehydrated food. And, uh, and then we each took one other thing that the whole group would need. And I took... Um, matches, uh, fireproof match or waterproof matches. And another one took an, a little ax and a shovel, another one a shovel. And um, the others, rope and string and newspapers. And we were gonna build a um, lean-to. So we got out into the mountains and we started building our lean-to and it was, it was big enough for seven sleeping bags. And then the rest of the day we spent gathering wood for fire. And we were gonna keep a fire going all night long to make sure that we had some heat in our lean-to. Well, every group, the other groups were all men, they, they uh, had a different idea of how they were going to survive. And one group didn't do a thing. And we figured, you know, they're going to survive by just moving in with the rest of us. And we thought, well, that wasn't all that bad. And, uh, but that wasn't right. They, one of them said, oh, I found it. What he found was a very tall tree that was totally surrounded by pine. And he climbed that tree and attached a rope. Then he dropped it down to the fellas down below, and they just, went around the trees, around and around, and they cinched those trees right up into the pole, and they had a teepee. And then they, they filled in the holes with pine, pine boughs. And if you can imagine cozy at 40 below zero, that was the, the nicest, it was just such a warm, cozy place, and the scent was just beautiful, and they had a natural, uh, ground cover of pine, and it took them about 10 minutes what it had taken the rest of us all day to do. And it was just, you know, they used their heads instead of their heels. <laughs> and uh, it, it just showed us what you can do if you sit down and think out a problem and make a, a wise decision. And that was, that was, one of the learning things, we, one of the things we learned on that little three-day training program, but each each group had a different idea, and they were they were interesting. One group just dug a, a ditch and uh, put a fire at each end. Well, that was fine for the guys on the end, but the ones in the middle just had a hard time staying warm. Um, Another group just dug foxholes, and they just, you know, one group found a mound of snow, and they just dug into it and put their sleeping bags right into them like that. 
and, uh, and then put a, a, a wall around to cut the wind and a little fire pit. And then in the corner, they put a bar. <laughs> so they had a nice little living room, bedroom affair there. And uh, it, was, it was interesting to see what people came up with. But uh, during the night, the temperature dropped to 50 below zero. And uh, if anybody ever says there's no difference between 40 and 50 below, they were never out. There was 10 degrees difference, and I can attest to that. But uh, we made it through the night. Our, our equipment was designed for 70 below zero. And we had, uh, well, I'll tell you about the equipment. We wore uh, a real heavy underwear and wool, wool slacks, wool shirt and then a regular army jacket and a, a parka over that. And the parka had a uh, fox fur uh, hood. And the, you can, the fox fur doesn't freeze for some reason. And so they, uh, you could see through it and it kept your face nice and warm. You could breathe through it. And then uh, our boots were we had two sets of boots. One was for 40 below, one was for 70 below. And everybody else wore the 40s. I took the 70s because I thought uh, my feet were going to be warm. Well, they were warm. They were hot, 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 hot. And I, it was a mistake that I made. But uh, it was uh, very good equipment. Our sleeping bags, again, were for 70 below. And we slept with our clothes on, of course. And uh, they had uh, a hood. The sleeping bags had a hood, again, with a, a fur ruff, so that we had two layers of fur over our faces at night. And uh, the next day, we, again, just gathered wood. And a lot of people say, well, does, fi does frozen wood burn? And it burns, and it burns very hot. It's uh, much harder fires than, I, I don't know why it does, I never investigated, but it does burn very hot. And because the women were working harder than the men were at gathering wood, they all gathered, they all used our fire and we had to uh, melt water for our canteens and, and uh, put halazone tablets in to purify the water. And then that's what we used to rehydrate our food. And we all, all we had was soup and tea the whole three days. But you can live on soup and tea and you ha if you have to. And um, the end of the second day, we saw a Jeep coming up the road and it was the chaplain. And he came out and we built a little chapel out there and he had a service for us. And one of the men had a uh, harmonica. He was a wonderful musician. And we all, all the whole groups stood around the altar and we sang Christmas songs. And, and it was just, just a very peaceful moment in what had been a hard day and a hard night. And it was so unexpected because we didn't expect to be that, that peaceful. It was just beautiful because it was a still night and that music just reverberated off the mountains. It was a very, very different experience that none of us expected. So then the next morning we had to take everything down, get it all. We wanted to leave it just as we had found it. And the guys with the teepee just cut the rope. <laughs> their, their tree sprung back again and it was over. And we worked all day taking down our tea. <laughs> the guys filling up their, tr their holes. <laughs> and these guys sitting there watching it all happen. And there again, they used their heads and we didn't. But then we got home and everybody got, you know, ran for the showers. But uh, 
we got to thinking, so what? You know, we got out there, we did this, so what? Well, then the Cuban crisis came. And I think you're too young for the Cuban crisis, but, but you maybe read it in history. Uh, and we were the closest military post to Russia. So the decision was that if anything happened, we would evacuate the post. Now we had a, a total army division. We had the, the 10th Mountain Division was, was stationed in Alaska. And we had the hospital, a big hospital. Um, the Air Force had a very large research section. Within one day, less than a day, they had evacuated all the patients to, to back to the States. The 10th Mountain Division was out on the roads, all packed, ready to evacuate. The, they had planes on the ground to take the dependents out. And our hospital had also <coughs> had a uh, uh, field hospital equipment. So that was on trucks. The food was on the, on the trucks and we were in our gear ready to go out with the same stuff we took on our original. And, and we, we knew exactly what to do and how to do it. And then we realized that that was what that training was all about, to get us ready. And all of the people who had had the training, well, that was everybody, were so confident that they could, they could survive because we had survived. And uh, we, we just saw the reason for training. This has been a, a very interesting experience and thank you for, for allowing me to do these, this story. And uh, I want to thank the people at the Veterans Memorial because they've been very, very nice to me. <laughs>